Hey, I'm Steve, also known as Terramantis, and recently, as you already may know, Bungie revealed Destiny 2 to the world at an event on May 18th. Well, what you may not know is that I was there. I got a chance to sit in the audience as Activision and Bungie pull back the curtain on Destiny 2 for the first time in a stunning presentation. But then, shortly after the shock and awe display of Destiny 2, I escaped the PR marketing presentation machine and got my hands on Destiny 2. I was able to play the first campaign mission, a strike, and some PvP on both PlayStation 4 as well as PC. And that's what we're going to talk about. This video will cover the most important aspects of Bungie's upcoming title from the gameplay reveal. Alright, so let's jump into it. Let's discuss 10 things that you need to know about Destiny 2. First off, let's start with some of the bigger, more impactful changes to Destiny 2. Some of the fundamental game-altering differences to Destiny's mechanics. First of all is the change to the way weapon loadouts operate. Now, in Destiny 2, instead of having primary, secondary, and heavy weapon slots like in Destiny 1 with several different weapon types that can go into each slot, now the slots are broken down into similar yet different categories of kinetic, energy, and power. The simplest way to look at the new loadouts is like this. Kinetic weapons are pretty much everything you'd expect to go in your primary slot like an auto rifle, hand cannon, pulse rifle, and so on. But no weapons with elemental damage or burns can go in your kinetic slot. Elemental damaging weapons are now reserved for your secondary or energy slot. The cool thing about this though is that now you can have multiple of the same weapon types equipped simultaneously. In other words, if you love hand cannons, you can have a kinetic hand cannon in your primary while also having a hand cannon with a burn in your energy slot as well. Overall though, the major difference here being that power weapons, which used to be the heavy slot, is now reserved for anything, well, powerful. Like sniper rifles, fusion rifles, shotguns, rocket launchers, and new weapons like the grenade launcher. Which brings me to the next topic, new weapons. In the preview build, there was two new weapon types, submachine guns and the grenade launcher. The submachine gun had a drastic drop off in damage at medium range, but melted at close range. Meaning if you want to wield one of these things, you had pretty much better treat this thing like a long range shotgun and not much else. Now as for the grenade launcher, it felt pretty powerful. Obviously not as accurate as a rocket launcher or as powerful, but what it lacked in the rocket launcher strengths, it more than made up for it with rate of fire in combination with a fairly quick reload speed. I actually really like the grenade launcher. Alright, now that we've covered weapons, let's discuss actual classes in Destiny 2. There were still the three traditional Destiny archetype classes of Hunter, Warlock, and Titan, but obviously, it's the subclasses that make them unique. Now at the demo, in no form did we get to see the Fire Titan, the Void Hunter, or the Arc Warlock. So basically, all the subclasses that were in the Taken King were absent, but we did get three new subclasses. The Sentinel, a Void Shield wielding Titan able to block and attack. The Dawnblade, a Flame Sword Warlock spewing explosive fire and the Arc Strider, a twirling acrobatic hunter with an electrified staff. That said, of all the new subclasses shown, the Dawnblade Warlock was the only one playable. The Dawnblade was definitely cool looking with a flashy sword, fire wings, and hurling bolts of fire down at your enemies, but really it felt almost nearly identical to the Hammer Titan of TTK to me. And I could say the same for the Arc Strider Hunter as well. Even though I didn't get to play it, it basically looks the exact same as the Blade Dancer, just replacing daggers with a staff. The Void Titan on the other hand was the only one that looked really different to me than the Bubble Titan, able to move, attack, and block with the new subclass. Now besides the new subclasses, there was also alterations to existing classes. For example, the Gunslinger Hunter can now have six rounds instead of three with the golden gun super, but the time to fire off these rounds is dramatically reduced. And last but definitely not least, the Striker Titan's Fist of Havoc still slams down with a shockwave of death, but now it turns into a roaming super, allowing for additional slams and shoulder charges. It should also be noted, at least from what was shown, that all supers now seem to be roaming supers allowing classes to activate their super and stay on the hunt. This will obviously impact PvP and PvE. How much is currently difficult to tell. Alright, now in addition to the alterations to specific supers, there's also something new called class abilities. 
Much like a super, these class abilities have long cooldowns. They also seem to have a large impact on team play. For example, the Warlock can lay down a ground area of effect which could either heal anyone who enters it or, on a different setting, increases their damage. Whereas the Titan could lay down two different barriers. One that's much taller which basically acts as a form of bottlenecking or pathway denial and a second barrier that's a waist-high cover base shielding. This cover barrier would automatically reload ammo when ducking in and out of cover. And the Hunter's class ability is basically Shadow Step on a long cooldown. When activated, it can either reload your weapon or grant extra melee energy. Now to me, this is Destiny 2's greatest new feature. A skill that's comparable to supers in usefulness, mechanics, and group utility is a big deal. These class abilities also lend to the idea of their title your class of Hunter, Warlock, and Titan. Make it feel like classes are starting to be more defined into unique roles, and that's something that I've been waiting for with Destiny for a long time. Every class having a slightly different melee, a slightly different grenade, and then a super being the only thing that really distinguishes different classes from one to the next didn't really make classes feel unique enough for me. I feel like these class-specific abilities are a step in the right direction to make classes feel like they're fulfilling a role. Alright, so how did all of these classes get these new abilities and supers? Well, to answer that, we're going to have to dive into the story of Destiny 2. The abridged version of Destiny 2's story is that the Cabal, led by Dominus Gaul, have invaded Earth. Gaul believes that the Traveler's choice to bestow light to the humans was a mistake, and the Cabal should have been the ones who were chosen. And he plans to punctuate this point by destroying the tower, obliterating our vault space, scattering mankind, and severing the connection between Guardians and the Traveler's Light. In the attempt, Gaul is successful. Guardians lose their light, their powers, everything. More than anything though, Destiny 2 focuses on character development of pivotal figures in the Destiny universe, specifically the leaders of the Vanguard and the player character's relationship to them. As Zavala's inner struggle of what it truly means to be a guardian surfaces with the dismantling of the tower and loss of light, as Cade tries to redeem himself through heroism under a self-imposed guilt, and as Ikora attempts to reconnect with herself, the light, the traveler, and what it means to be a warlock, as all of these things play out, we're truly introduced to these figures for the first time in Destiny. Who they are, why they fight, what drives them, and why they're the hard asses that lead the vanguard. Red Legion, you will take no more from us, and you will find no mercy in me. During these interactions, we see these NPCs interacting with the player characters really for the first time. Like Zavala creating Titan bubbles and holding the Red Legion at bay, and Ikora vaporizing a group of Cabal in front of your eyes. Really, the characters and the world they inhabit feel as though they've been integrated into Destiny like never before. At least in the first mission, Destiny 2 brought the world to life, and hopefully, this will continue with all aspects of the game. Alright, and on that note, let's discuss a different aspect of the game that was also brought to life very well. The Inverted Spire, Destiny 2's first strike on display. Really, the Inverted Spire was one of Destiny's best shows of what a strike can offer. And as for the Inverted Spire itself, it felt like it had raid levels of care and design put into it. Just like a raid, there was hazards, disappearing floor puzzles, catapult gateways that sever your route back, and gigantic drill blades that destroy anything in their path. Honestly, prior to the demo of the Inverted Spire, we really haven't seen this level of complexity in a strike. And this complexity also goes beyond the layout, hazards, and events taking place within the strike's environment. It also extends into the boss there as well, Protheon the Modular Mind. Much like a raid boss, Protheon had different phases which were marked by intervals in its health bar. From one phase to the next, different events and battle mechanics would take place, like the floor collapsing, the ground igniting with damage, exploding Vex joining the fray, among several other alterations to the fight. Overall, the inverted spire, from the boss to the level design, was one of the best strikes Destiny has ever had to offer. And again, hopefully, this will extend into the rest of the game. Alright, so with all of that said, let's move on to one of the last topics. Gameplay. Now this one is really simple, but it's extremely important. And that's the fact that for the most part, if you couldn't already tell, Destiny 2 is largely unchanged from a gameplay perspective. Guns feel and handle the same. Supers feel similar. Team cohesion feels similar. Jumping movement and the flow of combat. The rate to kill enemies and bosses with deep health pools. Destiny 2 very much feels and plays like the first Destiny. 
So if you were expecting sweeping changes to be introduced, you'll have to reevaluate your expectations, at least from the way the game plays and handles. Destiny 2 is very much a Destiny game. What I walked away with from the Destiny 2 event was not a sense of being impressed. I, well, I mean I was. I was extremely impressed. Bungie and Activision put on one hell of a show. The event was a sight to behold and a stunning presentation of a game they're clearly excited to bring to the world, and without a doubt have been working very hard on. The presentation blew me away. But the game, Destiny 2, was very similar to the Destiny that came before it, and I've played that for nearly a thousand hours across multiple characters. In other words, it's going to take something crazy to impress upon me. Now that isn't to say that Destiny isn't in and of itself impressive, I'm just saying that Destiny 2 was very... expected. So the takeaway here should be that Destiny 2 does not reinvent the Destiny wheel, but Destiny doesn't really need to reinvent the wheel, at least not from a gameplay aspect. The gunplay, action, movement, and enemy interactions in combat all feel extremely similar to the title and expansions that led up to Destiny's sequel. And there's nothing wrong with that. One of Destiny's greatest strengths has always been its fantastic gameplay. With that in mind though, before the Taken King, I always used to say that Destiny mechanically was one of the best shooters ever made, but was weak and lacking when it came to feeling like a role-playing game. But then, from the Taken King onward, it felt like Bungie started to nail that down. They finally started to get the narrative, cutscenes, rewards, and character progression right. Destiny started to feel like a good RPG in addition to a great shooter. I feel like Destiny 2 is making many of those same strides. The inverted spire was fantastic. The vanguard and characters are integrated like never before, and class abilities give a sense of uniqueness to each role. These are definitely steps forward. With all of that said though, from the presentation, I feel like the cards that will truly make Destiny 2 feel like a full-fledged sequel, with aspects that can surprise a long-time player like myself, are still being held close to Bungie's chest. During the presentation, Bungie teased at their new world exploration system and integrated an interesting new quest, but none of that was shown. If it holds true, if a deeper, more interesting, and richer universe can be delivered on top of all the things I already love about Destiny, like loot, strikes, community, and raiding, then that's when Destiny 2 will truly blow me away. For now though, those aspects were not on display at the demonstration, so we'll just have to wait and see. Get back, Mass Muskrat! Take that, evil alligator! You're going to Chainsaw Lagoon Prison! Billy! <laughs> <laughs> I know what you're thinking. First off, how'd I get in your house? But more importantly, are you having troubles slicing tomatoes? No. Is plastic wrap too frustrating and clingy? Gee, mister, I don't know. I, I guess so. And lastly, when Dad asked you to do dad chores with him, do you have trouble carrying all those cumbersome tools? I've literally never done any of those things! Well then, Billy, do I have the product for you! Ooh, what is it? Brand new Terramantis merchandise! Like mugs, hoodies, and t-shirts! Gee, mister, that sounds amazing, but, but what's a hoodie? It's like your overalls, Billy, but less stupid. <laughs> Golly, mister, where can I get some of my own Terramantis stuff? If you go to teespring.com backslash stores backslash Terramantis, you can find all these spiffy shirts right now! New designs are always being added, and some designs are only available for a limited time! So go get a load of these dapper shirts so you don't have to look like a fuddy-duddy! Gee whiz, it's so comfy! What's it made out of? Well, Billy, it's made of 1,000% cotton, 52% unicorn fur, and 83 parts per million of the dye that goes into every t-shirt is laced with Ryan Gosling for added comfort. Mm. Wow, none of that makes sense! That's not all, Billy! Not only does it not make sense, it's more than just about style and comfort. With the purchase of Terramantis products, not only will you look dapper, but you'll also help support this channel. Wow, I can help support content creators on YouTube and get a t-shirt at the same time? That's right, Billy! The power is in your hands and your hands alone, because you know sure as hell YouTube is never going to do anything to actually benefit content creators! That's amazing! That's right! So head on over to teespring.com backslash stores backslash Terramantis to get your amazing new merch today! 